So here's my very polished inner skirt. I'm going to take this original one that we before we duplicated off into this one, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this piece here. So I'm going to hold down Control, and what's the fastest way to do this one? Let's hold down Control, and we'll go to Mask. Let's do Mask Curve, and then if we Control Drag Out, we can hit Alt to kind of do that soft curve. So when you hit Alt once, it does a soft curve. You can hit Alt again to do another point like a Bezier curve there and we can just kind of mask that and then from the back here I'm going to hold that control go into mask pin and I'll just continue this around just by painting a quick mask there we go and then we'll hold that control alt to kind of clean this up a little bit nice make my brush size a little bit bigger by hitting S and then just dragging that across or you can go up here to your draw size or you can hit hold down space bar into your draw size if you want to and we'll just mask this out Cool, so we have everything masked. I'm going to go to solo mode, verify that everything is masked except this bottom part. Hold on Control Alt and tap. And then I'm going to go into polyframe mode, hit Control W. So everything that was masked has its own polygroup now. Hold down Control Shift, go into my select rectangle, tap this top part. I'm good to go. Now I can just hit Delete Hidden, which for you will be under Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. And now we've got this separate piece here. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and make this really nice. I can do a Dynamesh, I can close holes, and I can kind of make it clay-ish, um, but what I'm going to do instead is go ahead and Z-remesh this to make it super nice. One thing I'm going to do first is go ahead and s separate this and slice this down the middle. Now, uh, I'm just guessing because I'm kind of winging it here, but in order to get this really tight V in the center here, that's probably something I'm going to have to do. I guess, you know what, let's not do it and see how it does, and if we need to, we can always just mirror and weld and modify it across the x-axis. So we have our object here. I'm going to go into solo mode and look at what we've got. I can turn on polyframe, and if I hold on control shift, yeah, this is all one poly group here. So let's go ahead. If I want to get rid of these neck and arms here, I can go ahead and just like mask it out, or like with the fin model, I can go in here with my mask concave, no. Hold down control, mask convex that I have. And again, that's just under, get rid of that documents, go to brush, drag that out. If this is getting overpopulated, just hit R. Those are just your recently used. And then go to depth. And you're going to see when I hold down control, mask convex, it's basically just turning on depth mask and bringing this up. So it only kind of catches those edges a little bit for me. And then I can make this a poly group and then uh, delete those off. Another thing we can try is go over here to masking and then do mask by color and try doing masking by saturation. And if we now look at this, it just kind of masks the white areas for us. I'm going to hold down Control Alt and tap, and that'll just kind of bump up the contrast on these areas. So now I can hit Control W, Control Shift Select, and now I just have those white areas selected. Control Shift Drag to invert that, and then do a quick Delete Hidden, which for you will be Geometry, Modify, Topology, Delete Hidden. Okay, so now basically I've got all of this isolate it out. Now I want to clean up these borders a little bit because if I Z remesh this right now it may have a tendency to want to catch all of this alias looking stuff. Another thing I'm going to do is do a quick mirror and weld. I, I do a quick mirror and weld every once in a while just to ensure that I am mirrored across the x-axis. But when you do that turn LSIM off just to be extra careful. Um, sometimes if you have something that's not symmetrical and you mirror and weld with LSIM it'll take the local symmetry of your bounding box of your object and if it's slightly off center it won't actually mirror it across the world axis, which is what I do want. So to clean these borders up, one thing you can do is go down here to masking, uncheck these two and just do mask by features border. And then when you do that, it just masks your border edges, control tap to invert that, and then go to deformation, um, polish by features, turn that to open circle, and then just polish those areas in there, control drag, and now those are nice smooth angles there. So now what we can do, we'll turn on polyframe just to see what it's doing to our geometry. We have X turned on, so we have our transform across the X symmetry here. And we're going to go to Z remesher. And I'm going to turn my adaptive size down to zero. Um, adaptive size will take in the curvature of your mesh if you have a bunch of variations or undulations of your surface and try and uh, put more geo there where it needs it and then not a lot of geo where it's smooth. Since this is such a smooth object or I want the end result to be, I'm just going to turn that adaptive size down to zero. And then target polygon count, I'll just put that at two. And I don't have any groups to keep. I don't have any poly groups on here. And just I'll hit control W just because this is all one group. And then I'm just going to do hit Z remesh again with X turned on. 
So it's across the X symmetry, and that gave us a pretty good result. Um, it didn't give us a very tight V in the front or the back, but I can go in here, or in these corners here, but I can go in here even with just, with, just with my move brush or with my snake hook brush or my favorite brush to do this uh, is basically my move brush, but under curve, if you turn on Accu Curve, that'll actually pull out to a point. Uh, very, very useful. Even on a sculpted mesh, it'll do that. So that's a very handy thing. I actually have a custom brush, which is basically move with the Accu Curved on, uh, set to a hotkey, auto loaded. Now you're going to see it didn't quite get the center line down. In fact, if we undo that and we hold down Alt and hit Z Remesher, what that's going to do is Z Remesh with a different algorithm down the middle of the object. So you can do that to kind of get a slightly different result down the middle. And honestly, this one actually looks a little bit better. So let's just keep this one. So then I'll go in here with my move accu or my snake hook and I can just pull these up. So what I was thinking I was going to have to do is actually divide this down the middle, Z remesh, and then mirror it. But it looks like it did an okay job and it's easy enough just to go in here with the move brush. So I think I'll skip doing that. I think this worked out fine. So we'll just go ahead and even this geometry out. Now again, if this is just a little bit too high, what you can do is just go to Z remesh, just turn on half and then Z remesh half and that'll give you an even simpler mesh. Um, and even that's not bad at all. You know what? I'm going to keep that. So I'm going to go out of solo mode here and now we have a very nice simple dress and I can go in here and use my move brush, my move accu, my snake hook, whatever I want to kind of position this. Now we are going to give this dress some thickness in a minute, but right now it's just pulling around these simple the simple geo to kind of make sure it's correct. And now, oops, I must have solo on here. There we go. Um, another thing I like to do when I'm doing a lot of splitting and uh, splitting pieces off into different subtools is to go ahead and hit quick save up here. The hotkey for that just did it for me. But the hotkey for that is nine. Just hit quick save and then hit comma. Go to your quick save tab up here and then just double click the last one. Hit no because we just did a quick save. And now it'll just reload and kind of get rid of any history you have in here that might tend to make ZBrush a little bit crashy sometimes.